much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com. To schools not out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We are also live on Music 99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subjects, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at Television Jamaica underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on CSEC EDPM, where we will be focusing on advanced tabulation using spreadsheets. I am Antoinette Gray. The objectives we will be looking at today are to define what is a spreadsheet, to identify the use of spreadsheet, explain terms related to spreadsheet, correctly identify the main features of the spreadsheet window, accurately use predefined functions to perform calculations and to perform charting functions. A spreadsheet is an application software that allows you to work with a large amount of numerical data, making it easy to manipulate the figures and to perform calculations on them. Now, businesses use spreadsheets because they want to organize information into rows and columns. This information is easily manipulated once you decide to use the predefined functions and formulas that are already in existence. Now, when you use these functions and formula to prepare your data, you can present your information using charts, graphs, and tables. Examples of spreadsheets program that are often used. We have Lotus 1, 2, 3 and Lotus Synthony. However, these have been discontinued. You can still find examples of them online. And these were very popular in the 1980s. We have Google Sheets that is free online. You can use it from your web browser or you can download it on any of your devices and use. iWorksheet Numbers is an Apple Office Suite, which you can also find online and use for practicing. LibreOffice and OpenOffice are free. You can download them. They are open source software. They can be downloaded to your computer and you can use them even if you are not online. If you don't have any internet services, you can still use these. Now, the most popular Excel sheet that we are using now is Microsoft Excel. You can find this in your Microsoft Office suite and you can also find it online. So the one that we are concentrating on is Microsoft Excel. Spreadsheet uses are many and varied. And if you look at what we have here, we have finance, forms. We use it at school for listing and we can also use it for sports. For finance, we can use it to prepare budgets. We can use it for income and expenditure because you want to identify your income as well as your spending you also want to identify how much you have in savings. You can use it to prepare forms. Some of the forms are application forms, invoices, and why we use the spreadsheet to prepare forms is that we can update our form as we go along, and we can also use it to introduce other things that we can update as quickly as possible, such as drop down lists in a menu. We can use it for school activities where teachers can use a spreadsheet to identify grades of the students and to input grades. At this time, we are going to be taking a break for Lotto. School's Not Out will be right back. Stay with us.
Get Moving, home workout series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move, mobilize, to exercise. Jamaica Move, Jamaica Move, Jamaica Move, mobilize, to exercise. Come on, take a selfie, breathe. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. Hi, we haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Get Moving! Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move! Mobilize to exercise. Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Mobilize to exercise. Come on, take a selfie. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. Hi! We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Hi! Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. on TVJ. Get Moving! Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move! Mobilize to exercise. Jamaica Move! Jamaica Move! Jamaica! Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. Hi! We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick 
before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. Today we have been discussing CSEC EDPM, advanced tabulation using spreadsheet. Let us continue. Now we are looking at uses of spreadsheet and we are at creating lists using the spreadsheet. Now you can create a list by just simply heading into your spreadsheet and you can create simple lists such as a grocery list, a to-do list for daily activities, and you can also store your numbers for your telephone contacts in list using spreadsheet. For sports, you can store the data for your favorite players, your favorite teams, you can also input other information that you would want in your sporting spreadsheet so that you can have statistics on the different teams. Though you can find these now on the internet, your spreadsheet will be available with all the information that you input for your purpose. So it will be, you will be able to find it, them as quickly as possible when you so desire. So those are some uses of spreadsheet. Now, in preparing business documents using Excel, these are some of the documents that we will be preparing. Invoices, credit notes, debit notes, application form, trial balance, balance sheet, income and expenditure, bank statement, receipts, and profit and loss statement. Now, if you look at all of these, they will include some form of calculation except the application form. Now, students, we know that when some of you hear about calculation, you start getting jittery. Now, when, remember, when you're using Excel, we have pre-designed pre functions for you to use, so you will not be actually calculating for yourself. The application will be doing it for you, so there's no need to worry. Come on. Um, spreadsheet jargons that we'll be looking at as we go along. Workbook, worksheet, row, column, cell, cell address, labels, values, range, and argument. All of these will be explained as we continue. To open your Excel workbook, you will click on your icon that you will have on your desktop or you will type it in to get your to get into Microsoft Excel. Now when you open Excel you will get a window such as what we have here now. The window you will find in the window you will find a blank workbook or you will find pre-designed templates like what we have here. We have many of them. You can choose the one that's so fit the action that you will be, be completing in Microsoft Excel. You can also search for a template that you think will suit you best on the internet. But for now, we will be using the blank workbook. So when you click on blank workbook, your window will appear as shown here on the right. So you will have a blank workbook comes up to you and this workbook contains several worksheets so a workbook contains several worksheets but only one worksheet will be active at a time and that is the worksheet that you are currently using so moving on we are looking at worksheet now, a worksheet is a collection of cells organized in rows. And in a workbook, we have many worksheets. If you look at what we have here, we have three worksheets, sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. 
Now you can insert additional sheets as you go along if you desire by clicking the sign that we have here. So you click the sign to add more sheets to your workbook as you work. Once you are using lots of sheets, you want to know what the sheets contain. So it would be best if you label what your sheets represent so that you can find the information easy. If you look at the example here, the first sheet is labeled best, the next one Excel, the next one courses and so on. In order to label or to rename your sheet, you are going to double click on the sheet itself, the word sheet six here, you're gonna double click and you label it as what you want. Or you're going to right click sheet one and when the menu comes up, you will click rename and you rename your sheets accordingly. Now remember that this workbook contains many worksheets. Remember that using Microsoft Excel, the worksheets are made up of rows and columns. Now, a row runs horizontally from left to right on a page. Each row can be identified by a number that is on the left. So all of these rows, they have a number assigned to them. And remember the rows run from left to right. The columns run from top to bottom vertically and they are labeled using letters going straight across. So we start at A, we go straight across to Z and once we get to Z, it starts again using not one letter now but two letters until we get to three letters and so on. If you have, if you are using that many rows, when you get to Z, it takes you across to two letters and we start at AA, AB, and so on. Now a cell is the intersection between a row and a column. A cell, the intersection between a row and a column. So all of these rectangular squares that we have here, they are called cells. Where we have this black, rectangle here is going to be called your active cell or your current cell means the cell that you are working on is where you will have the black rectangle so right now we are in cell d6 d for the column represents the column letter and six for the row so we are in cell d6 A cell reference or cell address is an alphanumeric value used to identify a specific cell in a spreadsheet. Each cell reference contains one or more letters followed by a number. The letter, letter or letters identify the column and the number represents the row. So right here, we are showing you that we have what we call a name box. Now the name box will give you the cell reference or the cell address that you are actually working in. So at this time, the example is showing you that you are working in cell in column C and row five. So in the name box, you see C5 comes up because that's the cell that you are working in. Moving on to labels and value. Labels are text within a cell, usually describing data in the row or columns surrounding it. So in our example, month and expenses are what we will call labels. Now, each time you enter label in a spreadsheet, it is, um, it is to the left, because by default, it will go to the left in Excel. And whenever you enter a value, by default, it goes to the right. If you want to change the alignment, 
you will have to do so but remember default text goes to the left and value goes to the right a range is a collection of cells a range can be two or more cells and these cells does not necessarily have to be adjacent to each other so here we have vertical range vertical range in terms of where you are starting to identify the cell that you will want to perform a function on so a2 to a5 is our vertical range of cell in this example and please note that the colon represents two in excel colon represents two in excel horizontal range is a2 to c2 because your cursor is in a2 and we scroll across to c2 the mixed range is from a2 to where it ends in c5 so our cell range in the mixed range this one here for the example a2 to c5 and our multiple range a2 to a3 and b4 to b5 is what we will use in this range to find to use in this formula here continuing argument argument is the data that a formula requires in order to perform its function for example in the formula equal sum b2 to b6 the data in the range of the cell from b2 to b6 are arguments that sum needs in order to perform the addition and provide a result now the example here shows you that we have in data in b2 to b6 now you notice that we did not include b1 because b1 does not include numbers b1 include word so we are starting at b2 and we end at b6 notice we did not include b7 b7 is for the total all right so that is for argument now let's take a minute and recap we have done um, a bit so let's recap which of the following is not an example of a spreadsheet microsoft excel google doc open office or lotus symphony anyone the answer is b google doc which of the following are main uses of spreadsheet financial letters list forms anyone can help yes yes you are correct the answer is one three and four so the answer is c just a couple to go a collection of cells organized in rows and columns can best describe a workbook b worksheet c argument d range the answer is b worksheet the data that a formula requires in order to perform its function best describes workbook, worksheet, argument, range. And the answer is C, argument. Very good. Clap yourselves. All right, let's continue. Now we are looking at the features of a spreadsheet window. Now, most of you are already familiar with some of the features in the spreadsheet window because you have already done Microsoft Word. So some of these, you will already know what you can do with them. So, but let's run through quickly. Quick access toolbar can be found at the top and you will notice that we have the save, undo and the redo button right there. These are quick access because most times we use them regularly. The file tab, once you open the file tab, you'll have a list of menus there where you can either save the document, open, 
new or search, those are some of the things that you will find in the file tab. The name box, we just discussed it. You will find the, the reference for the active cell or the current cell that you are using. In this case, the active cell is A1. So the cursor will be in A1. Select all button right here. Not sure if you're seeing it clearly. This button right here is to select all. You can highlight everything you have on the page and select all, do whatever you wish to do with it. So you can copy and paste it somewhere else and move the information wherever you want to move it as well. Sheet tab scroll button. If you have a lot of sheets in your workbook, it's like how we, are, we have here three sheets. If you have mo many more, you'll not be able to see all of them. So you use the sheet tab scroll button to take you take your across. The status bar has varied information. It can tell you the sum of what you're doing. Also, it can give you an average of what you have on the page, the cell that you are using on the page and so on. Now we have the row headers. Remember each row is labeled with a number. So all of these numbers on the left, they are called row headings. The sheet tab, down the bottom again, one, two, three sheets until you add more in the space provided. Formula bar, once you type a formula in your spreadsheet, it will appear in the formula bar where you can make adjustments to it if you so desire. Column headings, are the letters above from A across your window. So all of those are the column headings and they are used to identify, to label the column that you are currently in. The worksheet window is the window that you are currently using and it will give you the information as you type across the screen. The ribbon is all that you are seeing above your workbook here. So all of this is called your ribbon. Some of what you should be seeing on the ribbon is hidden because it's too much. So once you use the arrows, drop down arrows that we have below some of these menus, you will find different things that should be on the ribbon. Vertical scroll bar will take you up and down your page. So whatever you're not able to see, if your spreadsheets get, spreadsheet is getting too big and you can't see some of the information above or below, you can use your vertical scroll bar. The horizontal scroll bar is the same thing, but it's for left and right to adjust left and right. Whatever you can't see in this space, you use your horizontal scroll bar for that. Zoom control, you will use if you want your page to get bigger, the items to be bigger or you want it to be smaller, you use the plus or the minus control. And the shortcut will give you a normal view, view shortcut or it will give you page break. If you so desire, you can practice these. As you are home, take the time out, practice. The more you practice, the more you'll get familiar with spreadsheets and you'll realize that it is not as difficult as you once thought. Now we are moving on to formatting of our document. Now when you format your document, the appearance changes. When you format the document, the appearance changes. It's easier to read and sometimes you want to highlight different sections of the documents. Hence, you will format using different styles. Now, we are going to be looking at numbers, alignment, formatting, font, border, fill, and applying grid lines. First up is alignment. Remember, we have left align, center align, and right align. So if you want to change how your text appears on your sheet or in your document, you can use left, center, or the right align. If you look over here on the right, as an example, we are going to be looking at bottom, 
bottom align, middle align, and top align. The text in A1 is at the bottom of the cell, so it is bottom align. So you can now change it by using the middle align or the top align if you so desire. But all of these here, you can use to practice, practice, practice. Changing the font color in your spreadsheet also can be used to highlight your spreadsheet to make, difference, to make a difference. So all you have to do, once you have your information already, you highlight the section that you need to color and then you go on your toolbar and change the color to the specific one that you desire or the one that you are told to use. Very, very simple. And you, some of you already know how to do it. You also know how to change font style and font size once you have the information on the page. Remember, you must highlight first and then you go to your toolbar so that you can make a change. If you want to change the font style or you want to change the size, you go to your toolbar and make the adjustments accordingly. Now, using borders in Excel, most of you may not be aware of how to change the border. So once you have your information, again, you are going to be highlighting the section that you need to, you need to border, and then you go to the toolbar and choose border. Now, when you open the border menu, you will find different borders showing you examples of what they look like. And then you will choose the one that apply to the project that you are working on. So always remember that where you have a, an arrow, it means other things are found on the ribbon. So you use the arrow to open the menu and you choose from there. To insert multiple rows or even one row in the spreadsheet, let us say you are working on a document and you missed a row, you missed out something, instead of erasing or deleting the item, you can simply insert a row in the space where you want the items to go. In this case, you take your cursor and you put it on the number eight in the row and just right click and a blank row will appear between the seven and eight. So you, all you have to do is just click on the number here. That's the simplest way. You have more than one way to insert a row, but the simplest way is to just click on the number, right click on the number, and a new row will drop in the space. Same thing goes if you want to add a column. Let us say you left out a column, same thing goes. Put the cursor at the top where the letters are. So wherever you want the row, you put the cursor there, right click, and a blank column will come in between. So if you want a column between A and C, you click on B and a blank column will come there. If you want a column between A and B, put the, column, put the cursor on B and the cursor will the cursor, right click the cursor and a column will drop between A and B. Sorting in Excel. Once you have already had your information on your page, instead of erasing to fix in alphabetical order or in how you want to sort, you can highlight your information, go to your toolbar and click the sort button. When you click the sort button, you will see the menu, sort A to Z, sort Z to A, or custom sort. If you don't want to sort A to Z or Z to A, and you want to sort on another of the columns that you're using in your spreadsheet, slim, simply click custom sort. And in the space that comes up, 
you choose which of the column you want your information to be sorted on. Okay? To merge cell in Excel, when you are going to be merging to center things over column or in more than one cell, you have to highlight the cells. So it's just like what we have, let us say we want to merge A, B, and C. We would have to highlight all three columns to make it one big column, and then we merge and center the information over all three columns. So if you want to center in a single column, you will use the alignment that says center. But if you want to merge columns together with information, you are going to highlight all the columns that you wish to merge and click merge and center on your toolbar so that the information will end up in one column or one row. To wrap text, it's very simple. If you have text that is extending sideways horizontally and it is extending far beyond what you want your column to look like or how big you want your column, you simply click on the toolbar and click wrap text. Now, instead of the text extending out, it will simply enter down the page and you make your column or your row as wide as you possibly, as you want it to be. But if it is extending too far, you can always wrap your text and then you make your adjustments accordingly. Increasing row height and column width. Now, most times when you start your Excel, your rows will be very small, your column will be very small. And so if you type excess information, it will look like the words are running into the next column, which really they are not interfering with the next column, but you will not be able to see everything. If you want to make adjustments to your row height or your column width, you will highlight the column or the row that you want to make the adjustment to. So you highlight the row, go up to format, click on format and your menu will open with row height Click on row height and insert in the dialog box how big you want your row to be. So in this case, they inserted 25 and they will press OK and the row height will be adjusted to 25. Same thing for the column. You are going to go format and you click on column width. And this is just one way of increasing your row and your column. We have additional ways of doing that, adjusting the row and the column. So in your practice, you see if you can find out another way of increasing row height and column width. Number formatting, very important when you're using Excel, you can use a general number formatting or currency, you decide which one it is you want to use based on what you are working on and you will make your adjustments in your number, it, to your numbers. In this case, we have percentage and we are, we are using two decimal places for our percentage. If you don't want to use two decimal place and you don't need any decimal place, you can change it. It goes up or down. How many decimal places do you want to use? Would you want to put a dollar sign beside your figures? You can choose that also. You want to put a percentage sign beside your figures. It's really up to you and the, the, the item that you are working on. Inserting grid lines in Excel. When you open your Excel workbook, most times it will be formatted just like this one on the left because the grid lines in your toolbar, the icon is ticked. 
Now, if you take off the tick from your grid line, you will get something looking like this. Your spreadsheet will now look like a Microsoft Word page. Now you want your spreadsheet to look like a spreadsheet because you want to be able to identify if you're typing in rows and column and to make your information uniform. So if you get your spreadsheet looking like this, just go back to the toolbar and tick where beside grid lines in the menu. Now we're moving on to formulas and functions. There are two basic ways to perform calculations in Excel by using formulas and functions. Now, if you use the formula to do your calculation, you must put the equal sign and you will have to put A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. You will consistently do it over and over depending on the range of cells that you are using. However, if you decide to use the functions, the predefined function, you will have to insert the word sum. So it's equal sum and your start cell where you start the numbers, which is A1, colon means two, A4, close the bracket and equal. And you will get the value for sum depending on what you are adding. So remember, in Excel, we use formulas and we use functions, but you must know which formula you want to use, which function you want to use in order to get the right answer for what you are asking. Again, when we are creating formulas in Excel, if we are going to be doing addition, if we are going to be doing addition, we are going to be using the plus sign for subtraction, you use the minus sign. For multiplication, you use an asterisk. For division, you use the forward slash. And for exponent, you use the correct sign. So once you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to use to find the sum, for which is addition, you're going to use the plus sign. Right? So please remember and also remember that once you're going to be writing a formula, you must put the equal sign in front. If there is no equal sign, then you will not be getting the results that you seek. Good? Now we are looking at finding sum, the sum function, using the built-in formula that we have. And we are using B2 sorry, B3 to C to B6. B3 to B6 to find the sum of what we have here. So we have equal sum, B3 to B6. Close the bracket, enter, and you'll find the sum. When we are using the minus sign to minus, we will look at what we have here as example. We have equal A3 minus A2. So that will give you the answer that you're looking for once you decide to use the equal sign in front of what you have. In finding the minimum and the maximum, it's the same thing just as when you are using the sum, but you change from sum to minimum now. You don't have to write out the word minimum, it's equal min, B2 to B11, equal max, B2 to B11 and enter to find the minimum and the maximum score in your spreadsheet. For products, remember we are using the asterisk and for divide, we are using the forward slash. So it's equal product, open bracket, start cell to end cell and divide, it's equal open bracket, whichever column you are using plus whichever column you are using, close the bracket, divide whichever column you are using. All right? And average in spreadsheets, you cannot write equal of, you can't break it. Like when we use equal max and equal mean, you have to spell out the word average, right? So please ensure 
that you remember you must spell out the word average once you are doing your formula right we are just gonna ask you that you remember to recap what was done today so that you can remember that excel is not very difficult it's just as easy as when you're using microsoft word so you just need to practice 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 that's all for today for csec edpm advanced tabulation using spreadsheet we hope that you grasp most of the points that was discussed you can catch a repeat of today's lesson on jnn today at 4 p.m and in School Not Out, I light on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It also will be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I am Antoinette Gray. Schools Not Out will continue with industrial education. We will be right back. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events,